of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. From this time forth and forevermore. From the rising of the sun to the going down. The Lord's name is to be praised. The Lord is high above all nations. His glory above the heavens. Who is like the Lord our God? Who dwells on high? Who humbles himself to behold the things that are in the heavens and in earth? He raises the poor out of the dust and lifts the needy out of the ashes. That he may sit him with the princes, with the princes of his people. He grants the prayer of woman a home like a joyful mother of children. Praise the Lord.
go to. In our time of need, in our time of distress, when we're weak and when we're worn, we have a Savior who we can call up and tell him all that we want. Amen. 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 I'm glad that we have a Savior who, who we can also go to in prayer and take all of our troubles to and take all of our worries to. We can take that all to our Lord in prayer. So at this time, I want you all to, to just think about some things that God has done for you this week. Think about whatever you may stand in the need of, whatever you may be in need of, whatever you're asking God for in prayer. This is the time I want you all to just take some seconds and just give God praise for, for, for believing that it's already done. So let's go to God in prayer. Oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent, how amazing, how awesome is your name in all the earth. God, we just come right now praising your name for all that you've done. Praising your name for, for all the great things that you've done in our lives, oh God. We don't have to think long. We don't have to think hard to, to think about all the great things that you've done, oh God. So for that, we just come right now praising your name and saying hallelujah to your name. God, we come right now just saying thank you. Thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you for starting us in our way. Thank you for food on our table. Thank you for who's roof over our head. Thank you for clothing our back. Thank you that we're in our right mind. Thank you that not only we were able to, to wake up, oh God, but thank you that we're able to get up here, God. So God, we come right now saying thank you. Thank you for your love being Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Thank you for sending your darling son Jesus to die on the cross for us. And thank you for another opportunity to come and worship your name. Thank you for uh, just being who you are, oh God. We God just want to say thank you. We had 10,000 tongues. We use each and every one of them just to say thank you, oh God. You've been too good. You've been too gracious. You've been too merciful, oh God. We don't deserve the many blessings that you give us. We don't deserve the many things that you give us, oh God. But you still deserve the blessings, oh God. And for that, we say, thank you, God. So God, someone has come in with, with their head down and with their body bent, oh God. Wanting to know if there's a word, oh God. We come right now praying that you will just fall fresh in this service. We come right now praying that you will meet us right now here at New Beginning Church, dear God. Come right now to pray. He will sit the preacher down and, and raise them and, and, and raise up the Holy Spirit inside of them, oh God. That you will speak through me, oh God. That you will use me mightily to preach your word, oh God. And we come right now believing that if they came in with their head down, they were believing with the new song with their head up saying, I got a feeling that everything will be all right. So God, we come right now giving you the praise for what you're going to do in this service. We come right now giving you the honor the glory for what you're going to do, oh God. And God, we just say hallelujah to your name. We give you the praise, we give you the glory, and we give you the honor. And it's in your darling son, Jesus' name, I pray and ask it all. Amen. Amen. And amen. Well, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I said, I will rejoice. I will rejoice. And be glad in it. Good Sunday morning to the New Beginning Church. I am grateful to be here another Sunday morning. I give praise and honor to God for allowing me to stand. I also give praise to and, and, and recognize your pastor, my mentor, my friend, the one and only Dr. Matthew Davis. Can you all help me encourage him and praise God for him? I wasn't going to tell anybody, but Pastor Davis owes us some money. Pastor Davis came to Holman Street, where I am the youth minister at, a couple weeks ago, and tore our church upside down. That man preached from heaven, and we are grateful for Pastor Matthew Davis's ministry and grateful for him and his absence. I know some people, uh, they think when the past is gone, that's their opportunity to be gone too. But I'm grateful for you all for coming to church. Amen. 
Amen. I'm also grateful to my pastor, Pastor Murray G. Martin, for allowing me to be away from Home Street on this Sunday. I give honor to my pastor, my father, in ministry. There is a word from the Lord. There is a word from the Lord. If you've come to hear Pastor Davis, hate to tell you, but you are in the wrong place. If you've come to hear from Ryan, myself, I hate to tell you, but you are still in the wrong place. But if you've come to hear a word from the Lord, that if you've come to hear a word from the Lord, if you've come to hear a word from the Lord, you are in the right place. Amen. Pastor Davis gave me about three hours, but I can't talk that long, so I'm going to only do about two and a half. Is that all right? Amen. Amen. <laughs> You all please turn to me to 1 Samuel chapter 30. 1 Samuel chapter 30. First Samuel chapter 30, I'll be commencing at verse number 1 through and ending at verse number 8. Then I'm going to jump down to verse number 18 and 19. That's 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 1 through 8, verses 1 through 8. And verses 18 through 19. There you'll find these words. Now it happened when David and his men came to Ziklag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziklag, attacked Ziklag and burned it with fire, and had taken captive the women and those who were there from small to great. They did not kill anyone, but carried them away and went their way. So David and his men came to the city, and there it was, burned with fire. And their wives, their sons, and their daughters had been taken captive. And then David and the people who were with him lifted up their voices and wept until they had no more power to weep. And David's two wives, the Hena women, the Jezreelites, and Abigail, the widow of Nabal, the Carmelite, had been taken captive. Verse 6 reads, Now David was greatly distressed, for the people spoke of stoning him, because the, because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his son and his daughters. But David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. Some, some versions say David encouraged himself. In the Lord his God. Verse number 7 says, Then David said to Abiathar the priest, Ahimelech's son, Please bring the ephod here to me. And Abiathar brought the ephod to David. So David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, for you shall surely overtake them, and without fail recover all. Verse number 18 says, So David recovered all, someone say all, oh. that the Amalekites had carried away. And, the, and David rescued his two wives, and nothing of theirs was lacking, either small or great, sons or daughters, spoiled or anything which they had taken from them. David recovered all. all right. Amen. This is God's word for God's people today. On this second Sunday of July, I want to tag this text. I'm getting back all the enemy stone. All right, all right. I'm getting back all, all right. the enemy all right. stone. All right, now. Church family, I I enjoy some, some good television. And if you're like me during this pandemic, you have watched some some, some senseless television yes. like me. I came across a show called World's Dumbest Criminals. <laughs> World's Dumbest Criminals. One story talked about how a bank robber went to rob a bank, got to the bank, and was not able to open the safe. Eventually, the bank robber was caught. Came across another scenario where where a, a young person went and robbed a convenience store in their neighborhood. 
thought they would be able to go in and take all that they wanted to get and take the money and take the snacks and take some of the chips and all that kind of good stuff that you find in, in the convenience store. Little did they know with technology nowadays, the owner had a way to lock the doors before the, the thief could get out. Eventually, that thief got caught. One of my favorite stories that I came across was family went out of town. As the family went out of town, we must have had some people <clears throat> spying on this family, knowing their ins and outs. And one night, they decided to go and rob this family's house. They robbed the family's house. And across the street, the neighbor saw that their house, that the house was being robbed. Little did the thieves know that across the street was the police chief of the city. The police chief then called his entire SWAT team, called everyone in the police department to come and raid this house and surveil this house and circle this house. And by the time they got out, the thieves were caught. And they did an interview with the police chief in an interview with the police chief, and the police chief said that they thought that they got away with everything that they had, but little did they know, they messed with the wrong one. And is that anyone's testimony on this morning that the enemy is trying to steal some stuff from you? The enemy is trying to take your joy. The enemy is trying to take your peace. The enemy is trying to take your love. But anybody have a testimony that says, devil, you messed with the wrong one. That's all that's, that's happening in this text. David and his 600 men army, they're running from this king, from this former king of Israel named King Saul. You all may be familiar with King Saul. King Saul is trying to find David, who is now about to be the new king of Israel. So David and his men go running and go into witness protection with King Achish of the Philistines. So David, he had 600 strong army men. Who, who go to their town of Ziklag. And in verse 1 of the scripture says it, it took them three days to get to Ziklag. It took them, took them a, while, a mighty time to get to Ziklag, marching to reach their town of Ziklag. And they got to Ziklag and they found, these men found their wives and their children were gone and taken captive. And everything that they built, everything they had, had been burned. Now, church family, I'm not I'm not married yet. But I, you know, uh, young girls like preachers for some reason. <laughs> but I, I, I'm not married yet. But I can only imagine getting married and coming home and finding out that my wife and my children are no longer at home. That they've been taken captive. Oh, no, it ain't going down like that. All right. It ain't going down like I know I'd be upset. I know I'd be uh, very furious. I'd be very mad trying to figure out what is going on. Yeah. And, and I'm fighting everybody on site. Yeah. And my wife and my kids come up missing. And that's all that's happened in this text. These 600 men of David, uh, in the heart of David's army, they find out that the enemy, the Amalekites, who are the enemies, have come and destroyed their town of Ziklag and stole their possessions and on top of that all the women and children are taken by the Amalekites including David's two wives. Let me pause here and tell you all show you something that I saw in the text. Notice in the text in verse number 2 1 Samuel chapter 30 verse number 2 the enemy just took the women and children. The enemy did not kill the women and the children. Uh -huh. Let me say that again. The enemy just took the women and the children. The enemy did not kill the women and the children. That's, that's what I want to tell someone today. I suggest to you all that every now and then the enemy does not always want to kill you. The enemy just wants to try to get you away from what God has to do. If the enemy kills you, the enemy can't use you. Let me say that again. If the enemy kills you, the enemy can't use you. So what the enemy does is the enemy tries to, to get an 
your mind. The enemy tries to, to get in your heart. The enemy tries to, to get you on the enemy's side. But then they have you right where they want you to be. The enemy does not always try to kill us. Sometimes the enemy tries to just take us away from where we want, where, where God wants us to be. The enemy doesn't get glory in killing us. But the enemy has a way of trying to get in our mind and make us believe that God has forgotten us. The enemy tries to steal your dreams this year. The enemy tries to take your joy, your peace this year. The enemy has tried to take your health this year. The enemy has tried to maybe mess with your relationship or mess with your family this year. The enemy has tried to steal your faith this year. This year. And I wish I had some folks this morning that can say, Devil, you tried to steal my stuff all year long. But today, I come to get everything back that you tried to steal from me. Anybody want to get some stuff back that the enemy tried to steal from you? Anybody want to get some possessions back that the enemy is trying to steal from you? Today is the day to get your stuff back. And I don't want to hold you too long, but Scripture says in verse 4 that David and these men, they wept. These soldiers, strong, mighty soldiers, strong men. They could do they 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 were they were so distressed because they were the, the, not only was David's uh, family gone, but these these army men, their families were gone. These strong men, army men, now crying. They couldn't do anything else but weep. And, and, and can I tell you all these strong soldiers? Couldn't do anything else but cry. And we live in a society now that, that tries to associate crying with weakness. That's right. <laughs> say it, say it. They are hurt. They don't believe that crying is a sign of weakness. But, but, but research shows that crying is necessary. It helps you to, to release what God, what, what, what's been holding in, what you've been holding in. So long, it's all right to cry. That's right. You better learn to cry every now and then to, to get a good cry out. Even Jesus wept. So, so to that person who, who who's been crying yourself to sleep at night, God sees you. To that person that may have lost a loved one and may be mourning the loss of a of a family member or of a friend, can I tell you some good news? God sees you. To that person that may be dealing with some family issues or dealing with, with not knowing which way to go. You've been crying every night. You have no more tears to cry. Yeah, your, tears, your pillows are, are stained with tears. God sees you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 to that person that's been crying so much internally yeah. that the external they don't have, they, the only way they can cry now is just internally. Yeah, yeah. God sees you. Yeah. Can I tell you, the uh, good news is not only does God see you, but God cares for you. Yeah. And he told me to tell you, and he stopped by, that he has a prescription for your weeping. He says, weep in man. And go up for nothing. But morning is coming. I said, morning is coming. And morning is bringing his friend called joy. Weeping man, go up for night. But joy comes in the morning. And everybody know that when, when we're weeping, God is still working. And sees our tears we shed for so long. Let me say it again. When we're weeping, God is out working. And sees our tears we've been, we've been shedding for so long. So, these 600 men were crying. And scripture says that David was distressed. King Achish just kicked him out. Saul. King Saul was on the hunt to try to take his life. His wives and children are missing. And now these 600 men who David has always helped are now turning their back on David and trying to hurt David. Yeah, yeah. David was distressed. Mm -hmm. And watch this church family. If y'all have been in Sunday school for any of five minutes, you know a little bit about David. Yes. <laughs> David Come on, man. was a man after God's own heart. He's a man after God's own heart. He's chosen by God. He was anointed and still was distressed by what was going on around him. And let me just pause you to tell you that just because you have a relationship with God, just because you are in communication with God, just because you go to church and you go to church. And you're 
through your Bible and you pray does not eliminate you from being distressed. That's right, that's right. It does not eliminate you from the difficulties of life. You will face distress. That's right, that's right. The Bible says David was greatly distressed. There's a three letter word that comes after that. That's but. But. When you put that but in there, it negates everything that went before it. Yeah, right. Let me, let me, let me uh, take this English class real quick. I know I may be sick right now, but God is still a healer. I, I, I know I may not have money in my pocket right now, but God is still a provider. I, I know I don't know which way to go, but God is still is a way maker. Anybody grateful for the bucks of life? Grateful that everything that went before it, I have a God that is able to put a butt in there and is able to finish my sins for me. Says right. so David was greatly distressed, but he had to learn to strengthen himself or to encourage himself in the Lord. David encourages himself in the Lord. He encourages himself in the Lord. Mind you what the text does not say. The text does not say David encouraged himself in rolling up some weed. David did not encourage himself by, by drinking himself to, to sleep. David did not encourage himself by going and telling everybody else what was going on with him. David did not encourage himself by eating it away. David did not encourage himself by, by, by drinking it away. David encouraged himself in the Lord. And, and David had no human being to, to turn and pat him on the back and tell him everything would be all right. David had to personally encourage himself. And let me tell you, there will come a time, church family, when you won't be able to reach your pastor. There will come a time when you won't be able to reach the first lady. There will come a time when you won't be able to reach the deacons. There will come a time when you won't be able to reach your church family, your, your church family, your friends, your loved ones, and, and, and this person, that person, or your spouse. And you have to learn to encourage yourself. I'm going to make it through this day without going off on somebody. I'm, I'm going to, to be able to pay my bills. I'm going to be able to go to church even though person A and B is not there, is not speaking to me. I'm able to, to I won't go off on my co-worker even though they're talking to me crazy. I'll just smile and go I have to learn to encourage myself in the Lord. Yeah, yeah. But then I read somewhere that says I will lift up my eyes for the hills when it's coming. My help. All of my help comes from the Lord. You have to learn to, to speak to yourself. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Yea, y'all walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil, for God is with me. Y'all got to help me out this morning. And my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches. And Lord, no weapon formed against me shall be able to prosper. He was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for my iniquities. The chest of my body, I've been peace with the part of my body strike. I am healed in our way, so I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continue with me in my mouth. You got to learn to encourage yourself. That's right. That's right. And I believe that David can help us find encouragement and our discouragement. David helps us find encouragement and our discouragement. And he reminds us of uh, point number one I want to raise up to you all that I found in the text that we must first remember our previous struggles. We must remember our previous struggles. Mm -hmm. David, he teaches us that when we get discouraged, we ought to go back into the archives of life. Mm -hmm. The archives of our mind and remember all that God has done for us in the past. Mm -hmm. And I believe David went back and started reminiscing David went back and started remembering that the time when, when he had to, to go and kill a lion and a bear. Then he remembered that God was on his side that day. Then he thought about when he was overlooked by his own daddy, Jesse, to be the king over Israel. Then he remembered how God still elevated him 
over his other brother's Then I wonder if he probably thought about uh 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 when he had to go to war with that giant named Goliath. And, and, and all David had was a slingshot and five stones. And then he remembered how God helped him defeat the giant and the situation uh, and the situation David's in won't be any different. God is saying, I had you back then. And I still have you right now. All right. All right. Let me see if I can make that make sense. Mm -hmm. One of my cousins, younger cousins, we went to the movies to, to see a couple, uh, couple years ago to see the remake of Lion King. Mm -hmm. She wasn't around when, when the first Lion King came out. Mm -hmm. But now she's here to see the second Lion King. Mm -hmm. And, and she got annoyed with me because uh, I was saying the entire movie. You ever been in a movie with them? When well, you sit watch a movie with someone, they watch, they have the nerve to to say every line in the movie. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, okay, we know that you've seen this movie, <laughs> but that was me. I, I was excited to see Lion King again. Mm -hmm. I was singing with Timon and Pumbaa, Hakuna Matata, and. Uh, 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 singing with, with Simba and, and, the, and the whole King Mufasa. I, I just love Lion King. So I was excited to see the remake. And, and, and my cousin, she whispered over to me. First she told me to be quiet. And, and then she asked, how, how do you know this movie if it just came out? I tell her, I said, little cousin, I've seen this movie before in the past. And just as I've seen it in the past, the same thing that's happened in the past is the same thing that's going to happen right now in the movie. Can I tell you all something? We're all in a movie of life. And we've seen this movie happen before. We've seen our, 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 our bills not get paid a dollar every pay. We've seen our health deteriorate a dollar every restored. We've seen this happen before. And if God did it before, God is able to do it. Again, we've seen this happen before. Yeah, yeah. Say that. This isn't the time to get spiritual amnesia. Yeah. We have to remember our previous struggles. Right. And our previous struggles will help us in our present situation. Right. Our previous struggles help us in our present situation. But not only must we remember our previous struggles, but I believe David shows me another thing that we also have a responsibility after prayer. Someone say responsibility, responsibility. after prayer. If we have a responsibility after prayer, that means that we must first pray. pray. <laughs> and David prays in verse 7 and 8. He goes and gets an ephod. An ephod is a, is a priestly garment that people use to communicate with God. Read about it in, in Exodus chapter 28 when you have some quiet time. Exodus chapter 28 talks to you about the ephod. And he prayed to God. And may I suggest to you that prayer is not just a, a, is not a script that you say before we eat it or some wish list that we have to give to God. Prayer lifts burdens and prayer fixes situations and gives you peace to get through situations. God is still in the prayer answering business. God answered David's prayer. In verse number 8, God, uh, uh, David says, uh, uh, God, shall I pursue this, uh, this army that has attacked my family? And, and God answers his prayer. God, see, God answers his prayer. God answers his prayer. It may not be the answer that we want, but God knows how to answer a prayer. Yes, and, and David says, should I pursue them, God? Yeah. And God responds back and says, pursue. And, and that word pursue, that's an action word. That's right. That means, uh, that, it's a verb, that means to do, to, to do something. And God answers, but sometimes we pray and God answers and we take no action on what God has told us to do. That's right. Whatever you've been praying for, you, you've got to learn to pursue That's and right. take action. That's right. That's right. And God has given you a vision. You've been praying for, for something and you're waiting on God to move. 
And even in God's sovereignness, it should not equate to our laziness. God's sovereignness should not equate to our laziness. I know sovereignness isn't a, isn't a, isn't a real word, but, but, but God, I'm gonna, it's okay today. God's sovereignness does not, should not equate to our laziness. And even though God can, and even though God wants to do however God wants to do, however God wants to do it, whatever God wants to do it, does not mean we are to do nothing. We have to pursue, and when we uh, uh, pursue, God answers our prayers. Time out for lazy Christians sitting around thinking that God is just going to drop down the blessing and you won't have to do anything. Time out for people thinking that you won't have to work for anything. You won't have to, to ask God for anything. That God is just supposed to drop down something like he's some dead in your bottle. And if God said, write the book, you ought to write the book. If God said to start the business, start the business. If God said to, to go make a move on that single lady, go make that move. If God said get back in the gym, go get back in the gym. If God said apply to that job, go learn to apply to that job. Just do like Nike said and just do it. Let's do it. And so David, he heads to find the Amalekites, the enemies who had taken his 600, uh, uh, and this, he heads to find the Amalekites with his 600 men and gets to what's called the Bethel Valley in verse number 10. He turns around and looks and sees that the army has shrank to 400 men because 200 were too tired to go on the journey to recovery with David. And my prayer for someone today is that God in this next season deliver us from folks that are not trying to go higher with us. And we ought to be able to send some text right now in the middle of the service to, 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 to that ex, to that friend, to that person who's holding us down and say, I know you're with me for the first half of 2022, but you got to go in the second half because God is trying to elevate me and you're holding me back. All right. Some folks you got to let go of because they are not trying to help you get to where God wants you to be. All right. That's right. That's right. But I love that David, he did not meddle on these 200 men that were not trying to go with him. He decided to go on in pursuit and, and, and find the Amalekites and, 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 and comes across this sick Egyptian man. This sick Egyptian man, he, he, uh, he's a brother on the road uh, uh, trying to, he's sick and he's Egyptian. And this Egyptian man turns out to be a slave to the Amalekites and the Amalekites left him behind because he was sick. And David, he sees this Egyptian man and he asks the Egyptian man to, uh, to, to take them where the Amalekites were. And, and all the Egyptian man wants is some food. So David gives, gives this Egyptian man some food. And once you give that Egyptian man some food, he just went to talk. And the Egyptian man says that I'll take you exactly to where those fools are at as long as you don't give me back to the Amalekites. Now watch this church family. The Egyptian man was with the Amalekites and then the Amalekites left him behind. The one who the Amalekites and the enemies left behind is now taking David to where he needs to be. Can I tell you that God knows how to place folks in your life that may have been overlooked, that may have been uh, an outcast by others, but can be a great benefit to who you are and trying to get to be right now. Don't count out that person that, that may be that may not be the most popular. Don't count out that person that may be the least of the lost and the left out because they may be the ones to help you get to where God is trying to get you to be. And this brother was last to one group, but is now leading this other group to get them to where God wants them to be. And God knows how to use someone else's trash and make it this treasure. Can I prove it to you? If the Egyptian would not have gotten sick, he would not have gotten left behind. If the Egyptian did not get left behind, he would not be on the road. If he was not on the road, he would not have met David. If he would not have met David, David would not know where the Amalekites were. If David did not know where the Amalekites were, he would not have gotten his possession from the Amalekites. And all I'm trying to say is what the enemy meant for evil, 
God knows how to use it and work it all for your good. David and these men, the Egyptian man, led them to where the enemy was, to where the enemy's this enemy army was, the Amalekites were, and David gets down and he sees them partying. All the Amalekites, the enemy, they're partying. They're singing some Frankie Bell in Maze and doing the wobble and drinking and smoking and having a good time and doing all that stuff that, that you know some of our friends do. We don't do it because we're members of New Beginning Church and we're saved and we love the Lord. But, but you all know some folks who, who, who they, they were down there, the enemy were down there, they were singing and partying and, and, and singing some uh, 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 Al Green and, and singing some some old school uh, Patty Bell and some, some Rick and Franklin and, and uh, uh, they were singing No Pain, No Gain, Betty White, all, Betty White, all that kind of stuff they were singing and having a good time. And David, he gets down to the Amalekites, sees the Amalekites, sees that the Amalekites have all their stuff. And the Amalekites thought they were able to get away. And then David and these 400 men show up. And I'm glad on this morning that we can have a David spirit. And we have a David spirit to go down to our enemies. And the Bible says that David fought with the Amalekites. And the enemy, the, the, the battle lasted for 24 hours. And, and, and can I tell you all some bad news? That we will every now and then have to battle. And we will now every now and then have to go into a battle. But, but I have some good news. The good news is that the battle won't always be long. We serve a God that will get in our battles with us. We have a God that's able to fight our battles with us. Some of us have been battling with the battle of cancer. You've been battling with depression. You've been battling with sin. You've been battling with sickness. You've been battling with unemployment. You've been battling with loneliness. You've been battling with tiredness. You've been battling with finances. You've been battling with your faith. But I have good news. It won't last long. How do I know? Because the Bible says that trouble won't last always. And I just believe that this too shall pass. And I'm glad that I can finish the story and tell you all that David in verse number 18 recovered everything. David recovered everything. David recovered everything. David recovered everything. You all waiting on me to move on. I'm waiting on you all to get David recovered everything. And I'm glad to tell you all that on the other side of your battles, it's your blessing. On the other side of your trials, is your testimony. On the other side of your mess or your miracles. On the other side of your defeat is your deliverance. On the other side of your battle is your breakthrough. And I'm glad on this Sunday morning we serve a God that is able to get in the battle with us. We've been battling for so long. We've been tired for so long. But today, but today, but today, we're able to get our stuff back. We're able to get our joy back. We're able to get our peace back. I'm recovering my peace. I'm recovering my family. I'm recovering my joy. I'm recovering my faith. I'm recovering my finances. I'm recovering my mind. I'm recovering my relationship. I'm recovering my body. I'm recovering my business. I'm recovering everything. I'm recovering this. I'm recovering that. I'm recovering all that the enemy stole. Anybody here grateful on this morning? That you're going to get your stuff back. Everything. That the devil stole. I'm getting it back. Everything. That the devil stole. I'm getting it back. I'm getting it back. I'm getting it back. Is there anybody that's grateful 
offer time. I say it's offer time. It's a, it's a time when we can all participate. It's a time when we can all participate. Ask that the church officials to come. If you all need an offering envelope, feel free to raise your hand and the usher will come and assist you. Amen. Amen. Contrary to what many people may believe, it's good to, to give your tithes That's right. That's and right. your offering. That's right. That's right. Amen. God loves a cheerful giver. And we want to be cheerful in what we have blessed God, what we have given, what we are giving God back. Give God a portion of what He has blessed us with. Amen. 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 Let's let's raise our uh, our offering of love. Let's pray over our offering. Oh Lord, our Lord, we thank you for an opportunity to give back a portion of what you have given to us, oh God. So God, we come right now. Thank you that we have to give, dear God. We pray right now for those who wanted to give, but we're not able to give it on today. So God, we come around this praying that our finances shall be in your hands, that you will, that we will seek you for our finances, that you will rebuke the devourer of God, that, that our finances shall be blessed because we give back a portion back to you, oh God. So we come right now praying that you will supply every one of our need according to your riches and glory. We pray right now that this offering will be used to build and to bless your people. We love you, we bless you, and we pray. So in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 This time, you all bring the offering now.
And we pray right now that you continue to bless us and keep us. Now may the Spirit of God, the love of our God, the sweet communion of His Holy Spirit, the love of our Savior Jesus Christ, rest, rule, and abide each and every one of us henceforth now and forevermore until we meet again. All God's children say, Amen. Amen. Well, go in peace. God bless you.